Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, so, uh, first, a couple of very short disclaimers. One, this talk is definitely going to be under the amount of time, so you're going to have plenty of time to go and uh, hang out and uh, enjoy the sun. Uh, secondly, uh, this was also only being given because Kat told me that we had to submit a talk. Um, this was intended to encourage the rest of you to submit talks by doing something so bad that we felt guilty. <laughs> that did not work. Um, so instead, we are going to be really talking about handling design critique. But I think this is probably also true of uh, how to handle awful people doing terrible reviews of your code as well. Um, design critique uh, is unique in that it is almost always given by non-experts to experts. <laughs> Um, but uh, but a lot of the time it can be in this particular case here. So this is a um, uh, a typical example of life as a working designer, uh, which you can see on the screen here, um, where you are trying to fix something and several well-meaning people come in and offer conflicting guidance on what to do. And that that I would say is probably the most the most uh, normal thing, right? People saying. Make oh, yeah. it more purple. Oh, yeah. Two yeah. minutes later, yeah. less purple. <laughs> right at the same time. All at the same time, hearing hearing two two entirely opposite things. So, yeah, as someone who makes a lot of icons that people yeah. critique all the time. Yeah. Well, just recently, uh, I managed to uh, leak uh, uh, yes. like an intermediate step of. Uh, of uh, an icon or uh, a redesign that we're we're thinking of. So there's something that you know we're trying to go in different directions, and Lapo tells me not to show anything before we actually are certain ourselves uh, which direction to go, and then this thing leads. And then I just go and and look at all the comments, and most of them. Uh, are uh, not very positive. Let's so, say. So, when you say tip one on how to handle design mm -hmm. feedback is to look at the comments, because normally people tell you not to look at the comments, right? Yeah, but, but I mean, like you, usually, like <laughs> you have to to be able to do anything, you have to assemble uh, a group of uh, people that you respect mm -hmm. and uh, you know are able to work ideas off initially before you go out in the open. Yeah. You don't want to just be alone yeah. and then just look what I did, you know, everybody tell me your opinion because it's going to be disastrous I think for your motivation to do anything like that in the future. That's that's a really, really solid point. I think mutual trust is, is really important and you see this just as much uh, it's very important in any kind of software team, particularly designers hate showing stuff before they think they, they like it. Yeah. Um, you spend a lot of time hating everything you're working on right until it's good, um, which can be never. Um, and But it's really important to make good software to actually show this early to people and to get their feedback. So you have to operate in an area of shared vulnerability. And that also means on the other side that developers doing stuff have to show you stuff when it's terrible too, right? When it's half implemented, when it's not good, you have to you have to have that kind of open and trusting uh, environment. Um, people will tell you that like if you work in the open, you have to be open with everything, and you're like you know the weaknesses of particular designs yourself. Yeah. You don't really need to amplify it by you know a group of people really hating on yeah. that particular things. So, so when you when you looked at this massive long comments thread, okay. for, and that was that was like, oh, it's blue yeah. again. I mean, like, selection <laughs> color is blue, and then and it's like, uh, oh, it's too white. You know, you yeah. can't see all of those things. You already know, you know, that uh, there's too much contrast. But the thing is, even a negative thing can actually be uh, a good thing to take because you were worrying about having enough contrast for the icon to be visible on multiple backgrounds and if people well, hate on it for it being too contrasty then hey the, the piece of information in there is 
it has enough contrast. So mm -hmm. that's actually uh, a good information that you can take in, wrapped in, uh, how do you say? Yeah, uh, wrapped inside, <laughs> in, inside a, yeah, that, the brick that is thrown at you uh, contains a message wrapped around it. Um, <laughs> so long as you're able to dodge the brick, um, or at least hope that it doesn't hurt so much, you can extract that message. But that can be very, like that's yeah, the kind of thing that as a junior or a young designer can be very tough to accept yeah, expect. Yeah. And normally when seeing a feedback thread like that, I would have just cried going to the pub, um, <laughs> taking the rest of the day off. Uh, like, and, and that kind of thing can be really tough, particularly if we're in trying to integrate newer people into the community who aren't necessarily used to having their early work shouted at by random people on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember actually seeing those, seeing those icons. Uh, I was talking to um, uh, I was talking to Jonathan about them yesterday. And, and the thing is, like, he was like, "What are these?" I'm like, "I've never seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> this looks a bit weird." <laughs> well, because I'm like, I'm kind of torn on the issue because, like, on one hand, it, it, like, if you only create this tight group of people that are that you trust, and mm -hmm. it's possible to throw ideas around. You're kind of closing yeah. uh, the inroad for for newcomers to, to to feel being part of the design process. Um, so it's kind of uh, a double-edged sword. It doesn't that doesn't help it. people feel like they own the product. But so is, like yeah. I just said, newcomers, it, it does hurt me as well. Like if right. if the thing that people are uh, critiquing is really early and you're just trying to figure out a style and you know it's terrible and then people are just like it got me mad because there was another leak a, a while ago <laughs> <laughs> and well it wasn't a leak because it was really just like out in the open and just somebody yeah. somebody picked up on it and um, yeah. if you read uh, Paul Graham's story about as well, why the segue failed it's a pretty, pretty great uh, essay, it's short, but just basically, uh, you know, segue was supposed to, that all this hype leading up to it, I don't know if I'm too old enough to remember this, but like he was going to transform, transform cities, and they had celebrities talking about this hit that was going to happen, right? And then it came out, and it turned out he looked like an asshole writing on it, and it's because they, they just talked to their, their you know, the designers among themselves, and they uh, didn't actually like put it out in the public, and nobody realized you look like an asshole writing a segue, a segue around, right? Uh, so sometimes that public feedback is really important for success. So how do you get that? Uh, it's a bad example because I'm swearing in it, but how do you get that? Um, how do you get that feedback uh, outside of your trusted circle without having a negative? I, I Good just, question. I'm going to say the answer to it. Oh, so, I'm saying the same question again, just so for the people who um, doubtless enjoy themselves watching this video. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you were talking uh, like about um, uh, about basically how to avoid groupthink, um, and, and yeah. particularly particularly um, the case where you created something that looks ridiculous, like you know. Uh, like how do how do you how do you bring bring more light into something that you feel yeah. really good about in your yeah. own group, right. but it turns out and to a certain extent, like creating that group think and that kind of team mentality is actually something you really want, uh, particularly if you're trying to, uh, from a design perspective, trying to enforce consistency. Right, you want people to really assimilate the the, the kind of like, tenets of the design style and to make icons that all kind of look the same and to feel the same and do all of that. So you want the strengths of the group without any of the weaknesses. Um, and that's kind of hard. Uh, one of the ways you can do this um, is by testing it with random humans. Um, like, yeah, you can test stuff, like, in a structured fashion. So I think one of the things that we're talking about here is accepting structured critique, right, rather than necessarily unstructured. Um, and I think that's just as true for sort of random merge requests as it is for, <laughs> for anything else um, when, someone's going, when someone's going through stuff. So you know that you need gates or, or when you're developing something where you do open it up a little bit more. Um, but I don't have a great answer on this at the moment as someone who has really, really, really got into the idea of some truly terrifyingly bad animations in the past and forced them out into the world and said, no, this is the correct answer. People will definitely love this. Um, and like trampled over all kinds of reasonable objections. Um, yeah, sometimes, sometimes you're just wrong. Uh, 
<laughs> and that's that can be a bit embarrassing. Um, Sleeping. Power efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does look like Okay. Anyway, um, do you have any do you have any better ideas on this? I mean, this is something we're not very good at as a community, I'd say, right? It's uh, So yeah, patch as well. Perhaps that's that happens because people treat I don't know, um, I see perhaps uh, people treat uh, designing icons, which is visual visual design, graphics design, as a subjective matter when it might be a little bit, but I, I wouldn't say that it's strictly subjective and I don't like the value critique it for, for this kind of stuff. Yeah. So when, 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 when I review code, um, code is by its nature is a structured thing. Yeah. So you can't write code out of order. I, I think I think one of the important points around interactive design, which people people when they see stuff don't fully appreciate, is that all of these things are in the system. Right? So intention with other like, like an icon, although it looks amazing on your web page, whether it's just like this massive photos icon. Like, you know, it's all it is, you just bow down and worship the icon. The icon is never on its own, right? It's like a, uh, you see a grid of icons, you see a dock of icons, you see the icon in a, uh, in the top left-hand corner of a window maybe, and then like a load of gradation and like you're trying to draw the eye to, to various different places, right? It exists in tension with other things and it has to live in all of these different environments. So you're always balancing and trading off things that that those who don't necessarily know all of the places these things have to show up. So, yeah, those icons may have been amazing on a, like a, a the, the app grid. Designing, but, designing yeah. for screenshot is something yes. that, that uh, we're you know suffering from. Yeah. Uh, people have to like uh, look at the thing holistically and have the, the right context. Like the the redesign that we're uh, we're working on is mainly driven by the app developer. And so, while even not, like what we're doing is is killing the work of of uh, Lapo and me in the past eighteen years, and if I look side by side by the old style and, and something that we're trying to figure out now, it's horrible. It makes me cry because <laughs> <laughs> those are. But the thing is, that is artwork, and the new stuff is, you know. Uh, a framework, visual framework for app developers to be able to produce their app icons in a reasonable manner. Yeah, so you gotta scale it. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that kind of the nature of it though? Like, when you have a, a outward facing product, it's gonna have to adapt as just the market design yeah. choices change. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly, sure. exactly. You have yeah, to, uh, you have to. To kill the things you love best because they're not relevant. Yeah, that there is definitely the, the sort of oh we're the dinosaurs, uh, you know, still sticking to something that's already outdated. So definitely that that is part of it. Yeah. I mean, I think as well the, the, the important thing to know is that to note, I always bring this up when I talk about design is that you know, it's not just like a dynamic system where like you have to see it moving and understand the relationships with the rest of the system. It's also uh, symbiosis with the computer itself and a lot of it depends on the technology you're actually looking at <laughs> and you know how many pixels are they what what kind of color reproduction do you actually get out of this screen right it's like the palette that you're choosing and you know, that that individual blue may not even be possible to show up on a you know I was talking to to, uh, to one of my um, you know, it, it's the absolute curse of Photoshop or gimp based design is you use a color palette that works perfectly here, and then you go to an actual user's computer who's maybe using a five-year-old computer that has been donated to them by a, uh, you know, and has been given to them by a charity or something like that, and they have a screen that maybe displays five colors. I, I think there's a there's a technical <laughs> solution to keep you in check for that. Yeah, just buy a second monitor yes. a while after you bought the first one yes. and then you just, <laughs> you just move the window from one monitor to the other one. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a particular problem with designers because often they have really, really nice screens, right? Because it is important to know exactly what that color you're looking at is what it is supposed to be because that, that's even worse, right? When you designed it and you thought it was great and then you went out and like, that's just a technical thing. Um, 
But, but this is one of those things where, again, that critique could be not what you expected because you gave it, like, you have to, to kind of be big hearted enough to appreciate that the, the system that someone else is looking at, they might literally be seeing something entirely different. Um, and not just for the obvious reasons that, um, you know, 10% of our users, maybe 15% of our users in reality, uh, don't see certain colors you know, that we, many of us do see. At least two of you in this room don't see <laughs> any red or green the same way. Yeah. But, I, but I, to go back to the critique mm. part, yeah. I, I do agree that, for example, the, the graphic design uh, side of things is definitely more subjective. Yeah. And uh, I've been uh, faced with the critique uh, of GNOME being horrible to look at and, you know, for, for, for the longest time. And most of the things, when I like investigated and actually asked people, it was the the gray or beige folder mm -hmm. that was that made the whole thing terrible for for, for, for people. Nautilus is the most used app. Nautilus no, yeah. is the most used app. Absolutely, <laughs> he, like it's, it makes a big difference, honestly. <laughs> and it, again, it depends on like what you're seeing. Again, you know, we might have designed the world's best uh, JPEG icon, but in reality, the user is going to see the photographs they took. It's <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, you have to be aware that you're you're, you're not in a fully con uh, fully contained environment. Uh, but that, that's a really good point. Like we get a lot of feedback about the look of going generally, um, and about I would say fifty percent of people say that it looks amazing, like really, really amazing, and about twenty five percent of people really, really hate it. And about twenty five percent of people just hate it a little bit. <laughs> um, and often that's great, like creating a polarizing product actually, like kind of open source projects do want to be a little bit more aggressive like that and create, you know, maybe not create haters to the same extent we might have created in the past, <laughs> but to create super fans, right? You want to create enough passionate people that they want to work on it themselves, that they see that, you know, they see themselves represented in it and that they, they like, they feel ownership and, and love of this. Like, you know, they donate, they, they, they give. We want to involve people to get more creators uh, making more play. Uh, but I mean, that, that, that's, that, that's the other kind of, the real point is if people can't actually use the stuff, I mean, to go back to what you were saying there, is like the real critique and the real critique that hurts is, uh, to me, is that no one can use the stuff that you're making. Right? So building a system or something that actually lets People create awesomeness. Uh, makes it a little bit worthwhile. Don't know. I, I guess the, my 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 point was that even though graphic yeah. stuff has its subjective side of reviews, um, it also has a very objective. Um, oh yeah, feature to review stuff. Yes. Well, I have another anecdote for that. Bring it. Um, Bring it to the mic. Yeah, come, come, come close to the mic. I have another anecdote about positive feedback. Mm. The worst kind of positive feedback that I ever gotten was, oh, your icons are so... Well, it's way back when I was really into theming, <laughs> and I created a lot of different looks for the desktop, and I got a fan mail really praising my work uh, with a screenshot attached with all the styles mixed in. So it just created this, this horrible mess. So you can get positive feedback that just ruins the day as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, uh, so a question about critique. We talked about getting critique from like the layman, like your general yeah. user. What about critiques from other experts that yeah. might not be very positive? So traditionally speaking, um, in, if you work in a design agency, you get very uh, Refer to as robust critique. Um, this is probably born around harassment and, and causes lots and lots of people to leave the industry. That's pretty terrible. Um, and many organizations don't do it that way anymore. And I'm proud to say that most of the ones that I've worked at in the past didn't. Uh, but it definitely, it definitely exists. Uh, and it can be much worse than the kind of critique that you get uh, you get there, but generally speaking you have a kind of structured process of critique. Um, normally kind of weekly meetings. Um, and yeah, that's up to the 
ask the person here as to how much they wish to break you down <laughs> or spend, spend the time obsessing over individual things. But like normally what you're looking at is you start off you start off everything with a brief, right? You know what you're trying to get to. So um, a lot of the times, how how well have you realised that brief? You know, I think that's the that's the important thing that, that actually makes this thing more objective, right? Is how well have you realised what you're trying to do? And then you can also apply some kind of basic standards like is it contrasty enough, right? Some of, some of these things you can work out programmatically. Um, designers should be more programmatic about the way they do some of these things. Uh, some of these things you just have to, um, you kind of have to feel a little bit. But um, yeah, it can be really hard. Uh, like, and the, the hard part about it can often be that these kind of work-ons are not specific enough. I think that's the, the really the really tough the really tough thing is trying to is trying to identify something which is um, when you're critiquing something from someone that is specific enough to be helpful but not so specific that it's like just move that pixel to the left just move that pixel to the right move it to the left three <laughs> right um, like when you are making changes and iterating um, it's really important to like overcorrect these things even if it makes the iteration process last a bit longer you know don't just change something. Like this is a true for anything else. Like if you're changing an animation or working on working on spacing or something, change it by fifty percent, change it by one hundred and fifty percent, and then go, was that right or was that not? But why do you spend basically forever just micromanaging your way to, to do? It? And you know, humans don't have enough cycle; uh, they can't see enough difference, and you'll, you'll just give up eventually. And that actually is the real thing that is you can worry about is basically making people bored, which obviously I'm very worried about now. It seems that we have actually spoken for about 35 minutes on this stuff. <laughs> um, is, uh, and, and, um, and they just go, yeah, sure, sure, but, right? And you haven't actually reached that goal you want to do. You haven't made the quality thing that you know. So you need some shortcuts to try and get there quickly. I don't know. What else do you reckon? You've got five minutes of stuff to say. I can't do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I have one more question. Yeah. Oh, please do. Okay. Uh, this one is a uh, slightly different direction. Um, how do you do? How do you deal with this idea of like, what do you actually owe your end user? They're not paying for it, and you're a volunteer. So I mean, one philosophy is screw you. I'm making this for me, and I'm letting you have it. Yeah. You should be grateful. I mean, and then the other one is like, do you have to give them what they want at all? Can you just say, you know, screw up. I, I, tr I prefer to try and think it to not personify like individuals. I uh, think if you're, uh, it's a bit recounted, <laughs> but like if you if you never make something for just one person, right? Try and try and genericize that problem to a class. Um, even yourself, even right. yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and also part of it is like, what's your motivation? I, I'm massively egotistical, and I want to make software that is that you know changes the world. Not necessarily for the better, just change it. <laughs> it's, uh, but uh, so, so you kind of do need a lot of users to do that kind of thing. So you're trying to think about what and what what does what kind of what interests this person represents. You know, it's only a seven marks of analysis. But uh, like, you know, is this is this is this the kind of thing that there are hundreds of millions of um, mid thirty single mums who would like to use a computer? And this is actually kind of putting off trying this stuff here, right? You know, is, is this something that's not getting in their, their life or that would be helpful for them? Um, but yeah, if you're trying to, if, if you, to me, if it gets all very individual, then, then I get a bit vindictive about it. I don't, I, I don't think it's very helpful to the conversation. Um, you know, if you try, you, you try to make it a bit more abstract and a little bit uh, less, less personal, then I think people as well can can take that out of themselves and they can understand that they themselves are, you know, maybe partially representing that kind of user, but not fully, and there are other people out there. Um, but I don't know, there are different tactics. Yeah, for, uh, for, for me, it's different when we talk about uh, graphic design, which to me is very personal. So I'm, I'm always trying to make something that I myself find pleasing to look at. Um, and interaction design, so my, uh, I always try to step out of the our community and, and try to think of you know the, the usually like I, I emphasize with my my parents 
my dad was running Linux for ages, and it was just painful to see him uh, work it. And now my kids are using it. My, my daughter is using Linux on the workstation. Um, so I always, you know, picture them uh, using the product because the, the interaction that uh, you know, when you're when you're uh, targeting an enthusiast uh, engineer. Yeah. And somebody like my daughter is very different. Yeah. They can be equally valid to target the user essentially. My good friends over at System76, they really have <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like in engineers are people too, right? It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. It was, uh, <laughs> like, how do you deal with people that actually genuinely want that looking desktop environment? Like, they genuinely want no icons, yeah. just text. I agree with If you look, system. like, I always, I don't think it's. Uh, like Firefox uh, does that anymore, but they used to have like this theming site where people would would do vote vote, vote for, for the design. Yeah. And, like the top ten uh, skins for Firefox were just this nightmare of a, <laughs> of a gallery. So <laughs> something popular doesn't mean anything for graphic design. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, yeah, it depends what you're after. It's some people. Some people are willing to to trade off a little bit of usability for a lot of uh, personalization, customization features. Something that most people are not to. Uh, so I'm glad that there are products out there that do that. But if you're striving for the, the kind of mass market that we're striving for, then it's a bit less. Uh, but, you know, I still have a hint to that. These have been some really helpful questions, by the way, guys. Thank you so much. It's been a really interesting chat. Um, I believe that we've run out of time. I think it's finish up. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for, 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 for turning up. Um, thank you for allowing me to uh, impersonate Hilke. <laughs> yeah, Hilke, uh, I'm going to make Hilke watch the video. He's, he, you're missing out, that's what I'm saying. Thank you. When did you get the new icon? <laughs> um, <laughs> when it's <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I can convince Lapor to give a stab at it again, because he got really mad for me leaking the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so that's the other point of uh, this. Just, you know, calm, walk away, think carefully, find people you love, hug them. <laughs> <laughs> Find it up. <laughs> Find some friends you trust and rent them.